Welcome to video number two of my making of the Merchant in the Mills ED top. Before I get into what I'm actually doing in this video, I wanted to say something quickly because I came to a realization. So I called the first video a sew along and after watching it and talking to some friends, getting some feedback, I came to the realization that I am being a little ambitious with calling it that. I, like, first of all, this is my first time sharing, like, from start to finish making something. It's also my first time making this pattern. I haven't worked with it before. So, honestly, I feel like I was a little presumptuous with calling it a sew along. I don't think I'm actually able to do it justice in that way. What I do want to do is show you how I make it. I will share a bit more because I feel like I missed out on sharing enough information in the first video, which is the beginning things. So I'll share some more on that probably in the next video. Um, but let me get into what I'm doing for this video. So today what I'm doing is taking my fabric so this is my, it, it looks like a double gauze, which some people are familiar with, but it's actually quadruple gauze. So that means it's four layers of gauze fabric tacked together. And this is an organic cotton. And after you wash it, it gets this really pretty crinkled texture and it's really soft. And I'm, I'm thinking it's gonna be perfect for making the ED top with. This fabric is, organic cotton, maybe I already mentioned that, and it's from Birch Fabrics. I purchased mine from Stone Mountain Daughter Fabrics. It's actually local to me in the Bay Area. Um, they have their store in Berkeley. Anyway, so that's where I ordered it from. So what I am doing is I am using my hand carved rubber stamps. So I made these myself. Um, a while back, I was making rubber stamps a lot. I didn't know if I was gonna get into this in this video. I guess I will. I make hand carved stamps. I used the stamps that I made. I used to sell them and I kind of stepped away from that. It's a lot of work carving stamps and I wanted to branch out into making different things, sewing, crocheting, other crafts that I like to do. So I'm not selling them at the moment. I might at some point, but right now, not selling them. What I am doing is using the ones that I have. Every time I would make a stamp to sell, I always kept at least one, like the original sample that I made. So that's what these are. So I have a huge stash of hand carved stamps and I chose the ones that I felt looked good together. So these are moths and ferns. Um, this one is actually a, this is called an emerald moth. This one is a silk moth. And I found, oh, I have the reference book. The moths that I chose, I found in my reference book. And I got this at a secondhand store. I assume it's still in print, but I got this at a used bookstore. And it has so many insects, but I chose insects from this book and then sketched them myself. And so this is the emerald moth. And then this is the emerald moth stamp. So that's how I did that. And this is this one. I'm sure a lot of you know. It's a Luna Moth. And then this one is a two-part stamp because I really wanted to get both colors. Uh, this is, what's it called? It's a fern, what's that fern called? I know what this plant is called. Maiden hair. It's a maiden hair fern. And their stems are very dark brown but the leaves are this beautiful light green, almost translucent looking. So if it was one stamp, it would have been impossible to make 
both colors on it. Maybe not impossible, but very challenging. So I made them as two stamps. So I stamp this one on first and then I stamp this on next and they basically get into the spot that I want them to. And then I, at some point, just wanted sparkles, sparkle stamps. I, I never actually sold these because they're, they're so random. I wanted to stamp sparkles on things and stars. So that's what those are for. And so I'm gonna sort of use these as filler with my ferns and moths. And I'm going to mix some paint. I'm gonna show you that process too. And I think that's it. Let's get into actually uh, printing this fabric and I will show you how I do the whole process. Here are all of the supplies that I used. Small jars with lids to mix my paint colors and to store them in. Chopsticks to stir the paint and a paper towel in case I make a mess. Acrylic paints in various colors that I will be mixing together and I will share those colors in the description below in case you'd like to know the exact ones that I used. Fabric painting medium to mix with my acrylic paints so that they will stay on fabric. So I'm starting by mixing greens because I know that I actually need two different shades of green. The darker one for that fern up in the left hand corner and then the lighter green for the maidenhair fern. And the green right out of my bottle is a little bit too bright for me. So I added a bit of gray and brown to tone it down. So now I'm starting on the darker shade of green. I found in my stash of paints this olive green paint. And it's actually a fabric paint, so I won't have to add fabric painting medium to this one. I realized that this first green that I made was still a little bit too dark, so I decided to add a bit of cream paint to it. Now that the color looks just right, I am adding some fabric painting medium and mixing that in. And now for the color I'm actually most excited about, this dusty rose. The pink in the bottle is nice, but it's a little too pastel for me. So I'm adding a bit of the light brown to tone it down. And now that I've mixed it together and like the color that it's turned out to be, I'm adding the fabric painting medium and mixing that in. So this is the exact shade of pink that I'm going for. A very dusty rose color. Now I'm mixing the turquoise that I'll be using for the Luna Moth. And again, this happens to be a fabric paint that I had on hand. It's a little too blue, so I'm adding some green acrylic paint to it. Now I'm mixing the brown paint that I'll be using for the stem of the maidenhair fern. I added a bit of gray to tone down this brown just slightly. And then after I mixed it, I realized that it's not quite dark enough. So I went into my paint stash and found some black fabric paint. I mixed just a tiny bit into the brown and after I stirred it together, it was the perfect shade. So then I added just a little bit of the fabric painting medium since that black paint has some fabric paint it is fabric paint, so then I mix those together and that one is ready. And lastly, I need a color for my stars. So I found this cream fabric paint in my paint stash again, and then mixed a tiny bit of the fabric paint that is the turquoise color with it. Now my paints are all mixed and ready to use. This shade of turquoise is just right for my Luna Moth. And I love this light shade of blue for the stars. 
This muted brown is going to be perfect for the stems of the maidenhair fern. This green is perfect for this fern. And this dusty rose is the exact shade that I wanted for my silk moth. I'll be using the light green for both the emerald moth and the maidenhair fern leaves. And now I'll show you the supplies that I used to print onto my fabric. A piece of plastic to roll my paint onto, a rubber brayer to roll my paint with, a piece of parchment paper, and a piece of scrap fabric. Now I get to start stamping. I was trying to be strategic and start with the largest stamp since that takes up the most space. And so that means the Luna Moth. There's kind of an issue with this. So the turquoise paint turned out to be a little too thin. And the stamp is so large that that can also pose some issues. So what I decided to do since the print of this stamp wasn't turning out exactly perfect was put it around the edges. And it's so large that I really didn't want that giant print to be out in the center of any one piece of my fabric. You can see there I had to double it up because it didn't print just right. That's how I use this stamp. You'll see that I have a little trick here, which is just to put a piece of paper underneath the fabric where I want the stamp to go off the edge. And that keeps me from making a mess on my table. So now I'm starting to print the fern. And you can see that this consistency of the paint is a bit thicker and that actually makes it easier to roll and it sticks onto the stamp better. So this one prints much easier. And before I print onto my main piece of fabric, I always do a test print on this scrap piece of fabric just to be sure that I'm gonna get a good print. And as I print these on, you'll notice that I'm really just putting them randomly around the fabric on each piece. I just kind of go around the edges with one and then start to create little groupings of stamps and just eyeball it to make sure that I don't have too many of the same stamp or too many of the same or similar colors right next to each other. Hopefully that explanation makes sense, but you'll see it come together as I keep printing the different stamps. Now that I've printed Luna Moths and Ferns on all of my fabric pieces, I'm moving on to my Silk Moth. This color is actually, it's kind of my favorite of all of the colors that I made. I mean, you could see it's kind of almost like a non-color. It's a tone of taupe or almost pink, but I just really like the way that it looks next to the green and on this cream colored fabric. And you notice that I'm rolling on the paint with a really light hand. That helps the paint go onto the stamp instead of like squeezing it off. It takes quite a bit of practice to do this, this method, but it's pretty simple, just practice. And after I've printed silk moths on all of my fabric pieces, I'm moving on to my light green. And I have set aside my maidenhair fern and my emerald moth because I'll be printing both of those with this green color. Printing these stamps over and over again gives me a lot of time to practice with how I apply the ink and print the stamps onto the fabric. You can see that I sort of went in a circular motion with this one here. And it seems to help the ink go on evenly, starting at the center and moving outwards. Now between every other stamp, I went and rinsed off my supplies, but since I'm using the same color paint for this, I didn't do that. It's convenient, but it also means that my paint is kind of drying onto this, this plate, so by the time I'm finished with this moth, it wasn't printing so great. 
because the paint is drying onto the stamp and also drying onto the, the plastic piece. You might be able to tell, but it didn't look so bad that I stopped and started over because I could have. I could have went and rinsed off everything and um, then continued on with printing the moth. But it looks a little blotchy towards the end, but I kind of like it. I'm not too much of a of a perfectionist with this project. I really like the distressed look in general of the hand printed stamps. So it just adds to the texture for me. Now with this made in hair fern stamp, it's really tiny and very easy to apply the ink, but the challenge comes with getting it lined up properly. You can see that I had to get down and really get a good look at where the lines were lining up with, with the fern. Now, I'm not too much of a perfectionist, as I mentioned, and I like the distressed look, so I was okay with it that some of these were not perfectly aligned in the center. And now my last thing to print is the stars. Now I'm really glad that I have a few different sizes and different um, different stars to choose from because I use the larger cluster in bigger areas. But you'll see here that I had a little bit of trouble at the beginning. The ink is a little loose, but that's not really the problem. The issue was that my brayer was a bit small for the stamps, but I have a larger one, so I went and got it. The smaller one was kind of dipping down into the negative space and then making that print onto the fabric and that is not great. And so I'm using my larger one because it just slides right over the stamp and doesn't go down into the grooves. And like I mentioned before, I'm really glad that I have these different sized clusters of stars. As you can see here, I used the bigger one where I had large spaces left and then used the smaller ones where there was just a little bit of space. And then that single star, I put in spots where there was just a little bit of space left. And then that helped it have a lot of varied star clusters and it just, totally looks different in every single spot. Well, I have printed all of my fabric and I really love how it turned out. I actually wasn't sure if I was going to love the, the stars in it. When I started stamping, I wasn't sure I was going to love it, but I really do think that the stars just pull together all of my other elements and it really turned out exactly how I wanted. I love that each piece is completely unique. This top is definitely gonna be one of a kind. I didn't use any real rhyme or reason when I stamped these on, just sort of to keep, thinking about keeping colors kind of separate. I mean, you can look at this and it's not, it's not like necessarily perfect in where I placed everything, um, but I'm okay with it. I love that each piece is completely unique. And if I make this again, I could never get it exactly the same. I guess 
I could, but that would be a lot of work. Definitely not something I'm gonna do. Next, I will heat set this. Or maybe I'll do that after I sew it. Yeah, I'm not gonna heat, well, I do, I need to heat set this fabric paint because the, this fabric painting medium, one of the things that it says to do on the back to make sure that it, it help, to help it be permanent on fabric is to heat set it. So I'll do that with my iron. But the th thing about that is I'm not going to do it separately from sewing it because I do a lot of pressing while I'm sewing, like pressing seams open, pressing hems, things like that. So I'm going to wait on doing that until I'm actually sewing it. So thank you so much for watching. I had a lot of fun um, mixing my paints and stamping these in random places. And I am really looking forward to the next step, which is to sew this. I'm planning to make a lot of my own clothes. That's really been a goal for me for a while to have the majority of my wardrobe be handmade, whether that's made by me or made by someone else. Uh, and whether that's through sewing or crocheting or knitting or the plethora of other ways that garments can be made. Um, I'm really hoping to build my handmade wardrobe over the next couple of months and I will share um, as much of that here as I as I can. So this is sort of the first, a first project for me to be doing that. I've made some handmade things in the past, but I haven't really dove into that goal as much as I'd like. And so I'm planning to do that soon. Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. I'll be sharing part three of making my ED top very soon.